In this video, we will look at the fundamentals of material requirements plan. So in my series of videos on inventory management earlier, we have seen multiple methods of planning like economic order quantity, the P type system, the Q type system, etc. All of those are primarily used for independent demand items like cars, bicycle, etc. However, those systems are not effective when it comes to dependent demand items like tires, frames, etc. So cars and bicycles are known as items with independent demand because the demand comes directly from the market. Whereas once the demand for these items, independent items is received, in order to assemble these items, you require a lot of items such as tires, frames, etc. Now, since the requirement of tires is dependent on the requirement of cars, this is known as a dependent demand. Now, again, these items like tires, frames, etc. can also be independent demand because you can directly receive a demand from the market in the form of spares. However, primarily these are dependent demand items. Now, while planning or while producing finished goods using assembly operations, there are many items which are themselves sub-assemblies. So let me explain that using a pictorial view. Now, as you can see, in order to assemble item X, you need to have a sub-assembly A and components B, C and Y. So these sub-assemblies are made by joining small components. Now the requirement of these small components, that is B and C, depends on the number of finished goods to be produced. Now how many X need to be produced, that determines how much quantity of B, C and Y is required. So for example, let's understand what will be required if 100 units of X are to be assembled or manufactured. So just to understand, right, what this means is that for each count of X, you need two units of A and one unit of Y. Now for each unit of A, now be careful, it is each unit of A. You need one unit of B, but you need two units of C for each unit of A. So for two units of A, you will need four units of C. So let's understand this further using this calculation of 100 units of X. So for Y, we'll need one multiplied by because for each of X, you need one count or one unit of Y. So one multiplied by number of units of X. So this will become one multiplied by 100, which is equal to 100. Now for A, we need two units of A for each unit of X. So two multiplied by same number of units of X. So this will become two multiplied by 200. Sorry, two multiplied by 100. And this will be, be 200. So two multiplied by 100. This will be 200. Now for B, so this will be 1 multiplied by number of units of A. So number of units of A. Now number of units of A is 200. So 1 multiplied by 200 
which is equal to 200. Now let's consider C. So C will be 2 multiplied by number of units of A. So this will be 2 multiplied by number of units of A required is 200. So 2 into 200 which is equal to 400 units. So in order to assemble or manufacture 100 units of X, you need 100 units of Y, 200 units of A, 200 units of B and 400 units of C. So these Y, A, B and C, these are known as dependent demand items. Now, MRP or Material Requirements Planning System is used for planning the future requirements of these dependent demand items. Now, MRP basically requires some inputs and then it generates the outputs. So let's understand what are the inputs that go into the MRP system and what are the outputs that it generates. So the first input required is the inventory status. That means number of items in the inventory. Now before you start figuring out how much of each component is required to be procured from the supplier or anything. First, you have to understand how much of these items do you already have in your inventory. So this inventory status becomes one of the key inputs into the MRP system. Now the second input is the master production schedule. This is also known as MPS and basically this is nothing but the number of finished goods to be produced in the near future using these dependent demand items. So how many X need to be produced on which date? Basically, you know, that is your master production schedule. How much production on which date needs to be done? And the third input into the MRP system is number of units of the item required for manufacturing a single unit of the finished product or something like this, the structure, which is known as the bill of material. It's also known as BOM. Now once these inputs are fed into the MRP system, then the outputs are generated. So I just want to give a very brief understanding of again, you know what these inputs are. So basically you are telling the mass production schedule as to what and how many of the final goods are to be manufactured. So this is one X is only one, but there could be multiple finished goods that need to be manufactured. What does it comprise of like in order to manufacture these, how much and what all components are required and what out of all this is already available in your inventory. So this kind of gives you the entire current supply situation that you already have in your inventory and what needs to be generated or what needs to be produced in the future and what it will take to produce this in the future. Right Now out of or after this inputs have been received, the MRP engine or MRP logic generates the outputs. So let's look at the outputs. So the first output is the planned orders report. Now planned orders means this logic is generating what order should be planned in the future. So this report gives information about planned orders to be released on some future date. So in order to meet this master production schedule, what are the planned orders that need to be released in the future? For example, if the current month is March, let's say, this report can give information on what 
are the orders to be released in the month of April, May, etc. So first of all, of course, it gives you the planning of what needs to be released in the future. And second, once you know that what orders need to be generated or released in the future months, you can also plan for funds for payments to those suppliers whom you are going to release these orders. Now the next output is the order release report. Now this report gives information about the planned orders to be released on the present date. So let's say you are on 20th of March. Okay, so what orders need to be released today? And it helps the purchase managers to release purchase orders to the suppliers. The MRP logic makes use of the lead time of the items in determining the release date of the orders so that the goods are supplied by the suppliers in time for production. So let's say this X item needs to be sent to the customer on this date. Now the MRP logic will say okay once all the raw materials are available so this is the X item sent to customer. Now this is where your manufacturing has to start. So this is based on the MRP logic it is calculating how much is the lead time to assemble or manufacture this. So let's say this is two weeks. So by this time the manufacturing facility should have the raw materials. Now the supplier for him to manufacture and to transport to your premises it takes the supplier two weeks. So the system based on these lead times etc generates the report and says okay this is the date when PO needs to be released to the supplier so that you can get the material in two weeks and then you can manufacture and supply to the customer in another two weeks. Now the third output is order change report. Now once an order is already placed on a supplier, they start preparing the supplies to be made to the company. Now during this lead time when the supplier is working, the demand of the company may fluctuate. So instead of 100 units, now let's say the company says, okay, now I'm only needing 50 units, right? So instead of 100, it becomes 50. So some customers may cancel their order leading to revision of the MPS. So your MPS, this is going to change because now instead of 100, you need to manufacture only 50. Now because of this change in demand, open orders have to be revised. That is the suppliers are told to either cancel the orders, postpone for some time or reduce the order size to suit the current requirement. Now the order change report provides the purchase manager with information about all such changes to be made in the open orders with the suppliers. So these are the three outputs that are generated from the MRP system. In subsequent videos we will deep dive into some of these components.